without so much as a warning. Life hangs in the balance. And within seconds, nothing will ever be the same. Ever. I'm Ron Pitts, and you're about to see some of the most astounding moments of destruction ever caught on camera. A world-famous Thunderbird jet crashes, a train collides with a semi-truck, and a rocket fuel explosion so intense it registers on the Richter scale. This is destroyed in seconds. Oxnard, California. After experiencing an accident at these two cross streets, a man sets up two cameras to support his claim that this intersection is dangerous. This busy intersection has a railroad crossing, warning lights, bells, crossing gates, and a traffic light. He claims these elements are not only confusing, but also dangerous. So far, the man has yet to find any evidence supporting his claim. But that's about to change. At the railroad crossing, bells ring, warning of an oncoming locomotive. The crossing gates descend, but the confused truck driver suddenly begins rolling forward. The semi stops before crossing the intersection. The driver seems unaware that the truck rests directly on top of the railroad track. The train engineer desperately blasts the air horn, hoping the driver will respond. The trailer is completely destroyed and the wreckage is strewn for hundreds of yards. As for the train, it fares better, but will require major repairs. Analysis of the footage reveals exactly what went wrong. The driver of the semi is stopped at a red light when warning bells start to ring. Right as the crossing gates lower, the traffic light changes to green and the semi rolls forward. But before it can cross the street, the light switches back to red. A collision is inevitable. Just moments after the horrific impact, the lucky driver and her dog emerge unscathed. The 80 passengers aboard the train also escape injury. The complete destruction of this semi-trailer is a vivid reminder that when a vehicle and a train collide, the result can be catastrophic. Iksan, South Korea. A fire has broken out at a liquid petroleum filling station. Knowing the hundreds of small fuel canisters in the area could explode at any second, firefighters risk their lives to douse the flames. But their biggest concern is the 5,000 gallon refueling truck surrounded by flames. Unfortunately, there's one thing they don't know. Just below the truck is a five ton underground storage tank filled with flammable liquid. Then, just when firefighters think they have a handle on the blaze, massive explosion engulfs the neighborhood and rises more than 300 feet into the air. For this underground tank to explode, temperatures had to exceed 750 degrees Fahrenheit, the combustion point for gasoline. The ball of flames swallows the nearby buildings, blowing out windows and sparking dozens of smaller fires. The news helicopter is lucky it's not in the path of the flaming mushroom cloud. For the next several hours, firefighters struggle to get a handle on this gasoline-fueled fire. In all, several buildings were lost. 18 vehicles were destroyed. 
and 30 people were taken to the hospital. An investigation revealed that a faulty coupling connecting a filling hose to the underground tank triggered the fire that led to this catastrophic explosion. jewel of the U.S. Air Force is its elite demonstration squadron known as the Thunderbirds. For over 55 years, they have been thrilling audiences around the world with their precision aerobatics. On a crisp day in September, first-year Thunderbird pilot Chris Strickland takes his F-16 into the air in front of 80,000 spectators at Mountain Home Air Force Base in Idaho. His first stunt of the day will be a spectacular air combat maneuver known as the Split S. The slightest miscalculation can end in tragedy, and unbeknownst to Strickland, he's miscalculated. He's drastically underestimated the altitude needed to perform this challenging dogfight maneuver. He begins his descent about 1,000 feet too low. Halfway through the loop, Strickland realizes his mistake. He tries desperately to pull up the nose of the F-16, but it's beyond the plane's capabilities. Unable to pull out of the maneuver in time, Captain Strickland has no choice but to eject. A split second before the $20 million F-16 explodes into a ball of flames. The jet fighter careens down the runway for over 200 yards, and the engine over 100 more. A last look shows that Captain Strickland stays with the plane until the last possible second. Just eight-tenths of a second after he ejects from the cockpit, the plane hits the ground. Knock it off. Thunderbirds, knock it off. You can see Captain Strickland's parachute deploy out of the cloud of black smoke. Unbelievably, no one on the ground is hurt, and Captain Strickland, despite enduring an excess of 12 Gs during the ejection, he escapes with only minor injuries. Hang on it. September 1997, the McDonald family is gathered in the backyard of their Middle River, Maryland home for a weekend cookout, unaware that their entire neighborhood is about to be rocked by a devastating accident. Then, Around their side yard, they see a neighbor's house engulfed in flames. Barely visible in the fire is the wreckage of an F-117 stealth fighter. How did this aviation disaster happen? Just moments before, spectators at the Glen Martin State Airport were being treated to a flyby from the Air Force's once top secret jet fighter, the F-117 Nighthawk. Then, as the stealth fighter gets ready to make another pass, the jet suddenly breaks apart. The wrecked plane plummets to the ground as the spectators watch in disbelief. Finally, the pilot is able to eject. But the empty fighter is on a collision course with the neighborhood below. But everything is far from fine as the plume of black smoke rises in the distance. Seconds later, the pilot slams to the ground in the yard next door. It isn't long before fire crews arrive and try to contain the fire of the jet fuel soaked house. This wing of a $120 million Nighthawk is ripped from the fuselage. The plane spins and the high-tech thermoplastic and composite skin breaks up as the F-117 plummets to the ground. Luckily, no one is at home when this plane crashes through the roof and bursts into flames. An investigation into the crash reveals that the plane had been flying for almost a year without four of its five wing fastener bolts. These critical parts were mistakenly left off during a routine maintenance inspection and led to the disaster. In the end, the pilot and a few of the residents suffered minor injuries. 
It's amazing that no lives were lost in this accident over a populated area. What you are looking at is $100 million worth of destruction. These skeletal remains used to be a chemical manufacturing plant that produced rocket fuel for the space shuttle. This devastation is the direct result of an employee carelessly throwing a cigarette into a barrel of waste chemicals. My God! Look at that flame spread, will you? Days earlier, a cameraman captures this fire that has erupted. Dennis! That's intense. Pepcon was built in the middle of the desert in Henderson, Nevada, because it produces ammonium perchlorate, a highly flammable and explosive chemical compound. I hope nobody's hurt. With every second that passes, the fire grows. Oh, shut Nobody hurt in that, Russ. What they don't know is that the inferno now threatens a storage area where six million pounds of the rocket fuel is held. If the chemicals exceed 716 degrees Fahrenheit, the entire area will combust. Oh my God, look at that fire. The fire now reaches hundreds of feet into the air. They make a jet propeller. The intensity of the fire increases exponentially. Oh my God. Then it happens. Oh! Whoa, that destroyed everything. My God. As the explosion erupts, a powerful shockwave careens across the landscape, and a car traveling along an adjacent highway is caught in the blast. Multicolored smoke indicates that volatile chemicals continue to burn leaving one to question, did the blast detonate all of the rocket fuel inside the plant? Wow, so loud. The explosion is massive. Its shockwave completely decimates this building. The blast is so strong, it registers an earthquake measuring 3.5 on the Richter scale. 600 miles away. Two people were killed in the massive explosions. This driver was not one of them. Manila, Philippines. An eight-story apartment building has slipped off its foundation and could collapse at any moment. The five-year-old edifice rests in the heart of the busy market district and stands opposite of another high-rise. Residents in both buildings have been ordered to evacuate immediately. The building precariously leans over the street as crowd control keeps onlookers at bay. If this complex collapses, not only will residents lose their homes, but it could also decimate adjacent buildings. Suddenly, the building reaches its tipping point. The catastrophic collapse tears through Manila's vital power lines shutting down much of the city's electrical grid. The destruction from the collapse is complete. The building's inner structure now lies in a pile of twisted steel and broken concrete. The high rise across the street is also a total loss. Not only are hundreds of residents now homeless, but it will take weeks for the city to clean up the debris and reopen the bustling market district. An investigation reveals that a combination of substandard building materials and a weakened foundation from nearby construction led to the structure's collapse. Thanks to the quick response by local police and city engineers, not one person is killed or injured in this catastrophic collapse. August 2002, 
David Ferguson is racing in the International Hot Boat Association Championships when he catches air and loses control. Red light, red light. As the mist clears, the $50,000 boat is completely obliterated. Tiny fragments litter the water. Rescue only, please. Rescue the only recognizable only, piece you. is the reinforced safety capsule, which is specifically designed to break away and stay intact, even if the rest of the boat is demolished. David is still trapped inside, and it's impossible to tell the extent of his injuries. Halfway down the lane, David catches an edge, and the boat tumbles. Seconds later, the hull shatters into thousands of pieces. Among the floating debris, the safety crew diligently works to retrieve him from the safety capsule. After 10 agonizing minutes, David is finally pulled out of the water. And to everyone's amazement, he's okay. As the rescue boat pulls into the shore, it becomes obvious just how nerve-wracking the crash was for David's wife and kids to have witnessed. Right. I'm just fine, guys. Calm down, buddy. I'm fine. They're going to put a collar on you just for security. Okay, Would you kids. calm down? I'm fine, but you don't want to be, you know, oh, I'm having a hard time standing oh, here being a spectator. Shut up. Everyone is relieved knowing that David is okay. In spite of the scare, just two years later, David is back behind the throttle, this time at the finals of an event in San Diego, California. David gets a great jump out of the gate. Unaware that he's in for an easy win, he once again pushes his boat to the breaking point. Tiny fragments litter the water, and again, David is left inside the Kevlar-lined and steel-reinforced capsule, his fate unclear, as he bobs in the waves. The boat is reduced to fiberglass shards as David, inside the capsule, goes careening across the water. In fact, it's almost an exact replay of his earlier crash. And just like the one two years ago, it's impossible to tell if David is dead or alive. Rescue crews are quick to get the capsule on deck and back to the shore where David's family anxiously awaits. But this time, David's wife's already frayed nerves are shattered. Oh, you stupid We're not doing this anymore! I hate this! I David is not seriously injured. But after two death-defying accidents, it's no wonder his wife can't bear to see a third. January 2005. The town of St. George, Utah is bracing itself. Heavy rains, broken dams, and breached levees have caused the Santa Clara River to overflow. Now the entire area is in jeopardy. The town's people try their best to stem the flow, but there's little that can be done. The expanding river has already devoured roads, bridges, and entire neighborhoods. Now it's turning its wrath on the homes along the river's edge. The surging water quickly erodes the soft soil along the banks, and inch by inch, the earth supporting the houses disappears into the flood. Then, the inevitable. Oh, it's there it goes. Starting to crack. There it goes, there it goes, guys. Holy crap. It's a devastating sight as the house, along with everything in it, collapses and is instantly swept down river. It may be the first house to go, but sadly, it's not the last. Downriver, the scene repeats itself. Again and again, homes are torn from the banks and swept away. Some homes hang on till the bitter end but ultimately, they succumb to the violent wash. No one was killed in St. George, but a total of 20 homes were destroyed by the raging Santa Clara River, and $150 million worth of damage was left in her wake. Good night, and we'll see you next time.
Thunderbirds knock it off. 